If you follow me on Instagram or you're subscribed to my email list or you saw my post here on YouTube, you probably already saw that I have made the decision to end the freelance writer's guide. It might be more accurate to say that I am ending my involvement with it. There's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, let's just start at the beginning. Like, when I, why did I start the Freelance Writer's Guide? Where did that come from? I started the Freelance Writer's Guide three years ago in 2020. I had just purchased a house, like, right before COVID hit. And, I mean, right before. A lot of people I knew lost their income around that time. There were a lot of layoffs. And people were reaching out to me left and right, like, how do I become a freelance writer? Which people had always asked me that a lot. Um, like, especially when I was like traveling and would go to networking events and stuff, people would be like, that's cool, how do you do that? I also applied for a, an SBA disaster loan because um, I wasn't sure like if I was gonna still have money coming in and my house needed $30,000 of emergency repairs that I was not prepared for. Cause like, I didn't even, I mean, the house is like a whole other story, but I wasn't like, I didn't know I was gonna buy a house. It just like happened, which sounds crazy. We can talk about that another time. So I didn't have any money and peaches. <laughs> You're spilling my tea. Okay. I didn't have any money. I got a loan from the government. It was for $18,000 and the caveat was I had to spend it on my business. So I'm like, all right, well, I don't really have any, any, any expenses as a freelance copywriter. So I was like, you know, maybe I'll start like one of these coaching businesses, you know, with like the courses and stuff. And I hired an assistant, Lindsay, who was with me the whole time. We started working on making some blog posts, like just building like social media accounts. And we made a course together. And it wasn't even called the Freelance Writer's Guide first. It was just, it was all under my name, Colleen Welsh. Like eventually we rebranded re as the Freelance Writer's Guide and came up like with that, the fun branding that you know. When I first released the course, I had for sales so it was like kind of disappointing after putting so much work into it then i ended up going viral on tiktok then the next time we launched the course we had 44 sales so things really took off i like hired a business coach which was kind of a bust but she did like convince me to set up coaching programs and then i really started like making a lot of money doing group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching in addition to the courses. I think the most I, the business ever made in a month was 24,000, which was like crazy. I still like can't believe that that even happened. But that money didn't last basically um, because my course started to be pirated on the internet and there was like nothing I could do to stop that from happening like I paid someone to like do a bunch of DMCA takedowns but like once it's out there it's out there what they advised me to do was to like release an updated version of the course and like I just couldn't do it like there were so many things that that I knew I could have done with the business like start a membership or have like a discord or like a Facebook community group or they're like do more group coaching, come up with different programs, come up with another course, come up with mini courses about different types of copywriting. And like when I say all these things, all these ideas I had, like I just feel such a heaviness um, because I just didn't want to do it. Like I didn't feel passionate about it. I would just say that like making courses explaining things, teaching is like not my gift. I just didn't enjoy doing it. In the context of like the actual coaching calls, I enjoyed that or when having office hours like and talking to people, but yeah, making the, the products, writing these scripts for the YouTube channels, writing blog posts, it was exhausting to me and I would like barely I would work for like an hour and be like well I'm done for the day like that's how draining it was for me 
I hate to say, like I feel like built this audience on here of people who look up to me and I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I feel like I want people to follow their dreams and to believe in themselves and understand that like what you want is possible and that you are capable and you can do pretty much anything. You know, I believe that. I believe that. So I feel like I'm kind of a hypocrite when I have my own dreams and I'm not pursuing them, right? Like I'm spending all my time making these YouTube videos, trying to create content, like serve the people of my course and answer my followers' questions. I'm not following my dream, which is to be a singer songwriter and a music producer. So that's why I ended the Freelance Writer's Guide is so that I can focus on music as a career. And I understand that that may sound insane. I'm 34 and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be a singer now. <laughs> My best friend and I were just talking about this Yesterday, it's like, in 10 years, I won't be young anymore. So this is really like my last chance to do something while I still feel young. Like I'm gonna turn 35 in a couple of months. I'm like, it's now or never, baby. And I'm really lucky because I don't have like any responsibilities financially, really. Like, I mean, I have like, you know, my mortgage and my student loans and everything, but I don't have like, I'm not married, I don't have children, I just have peaches. I have saved up a little bit of money, not much, not much. Uh, I'm gonna run out pretty soon. So, yeah. But I am just like trying to stay in trust with it. And I'm like, well, if I get down to my last thousand dollars, I'll just go get some more freelance writing clients because I know I am capable of that. I don't really want to keep doing that, you know, you gotta make money. That being said, I still am freelance copywriting. I have my clients still and I'm working with them. It's just like five hours a week. I'm not making that much money. And also like, I just want to say like before when I was like, oh, I was making $24,000 a month. Like that, that's gone now. Uh, that pretty much was absorbed by this house. And that there was only a couple months where I was really making that much money, I would say, the business was usually making like more eight to 12K a month. And then there's all these expenses to have the course, there's the hosting, the email hosting, website hosting. And then I had my assistant Lindsay, of course, and like a bookkeeper slash accountant, like all these subscriptions, like it's expensive to run a business. So it's not like th that much money was going into my account. I was probably making like $70,000 a year, which is great. That's great. I'm, I'm just saying I'm not rich, so. I always just wanted to make something that was helpful to people. I hope I helped people, but a lot of times I felt like, you know, there's a lot of imposter syndrome. The other thing that was like really difficult was the, like the, I don't know, there's like a psychic weight that people put on you when they expect you to have the answers to all their questions and they're trusting you. And not that I'm not trustworthy, uh, I'm gonna answer my qu your questions to the best of my ability, but like, you know, people are, there's other coaches out there, there's other resources, there's lots of information. And at the end of the day, you as the freelancer need to learn how to help yourself. So that was another thing that was very stressful for me was just like constantly getting emails and DMs and comments from people who are like, you know, this is like my last resort. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, you have to help me. Like, please tell me what I can do. And like, I mean, if you get that comment every day, it's like, well, I have already created all these resources. Like, I can't personally help every single person. And, but like, I want to, like, how can you, how can, you can't just get an email like that and be like, and not feel anything, you know? But also like, I literally cannot answer all these people. And it's just like awful. So, I mean, it's like, these are such first world problems too. I feel so stupid like complaining about this. I'm not complaining, I'm just explaining what my thought process was while just deciding this. So I actually was not happy doing this basically from the start. It was super stressful for me, um, but I stuck with it. I was like, I have a purpose. Like the people are counting on me. And I also kind of 
like stuck with it for a long time because I was like, this is how I get attention and validation, which I need a lot of. <laughs> uh, but I've been working on myself a lot. I've talked about this before, but I started doing TBM, to be magnetic in March. And since then I've, I've learned a lot about myself and it, it's made a huge difference like in my life, a huge difference, a huge difference. Yeah, while doing that work, I was like, I really am not aligned in my lifestyle. And you know, as long as you're being ethical, there's nothing wrong with being a coach or having a course. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not for me. And you know, it's not even that I don't wanna like give people advice and be a thought leader, but I don't want it to be about freelancing anymore. Like, I just don't wanna talk about that anymore. I'm literally, I'm over it. Like, I don't wanna talk about it. So I am gonna recommend some people here who do talk about this and you should go follow them. I'm also talking to a couple different people about selling the freelance writer's guide to them because like I said, like I'm not in a good place financially right now. Like I only have like a few thousand dollars left and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm hoping like that I'll be able to sell the business and make a little bit of money and then that will buy me some time to continue to set up my music production business and generate some other streams of income. So what does that mean for you, the viewer of the Freelance Writer's Guide? I am rebranding this channel. You probably, you may have noticed that my username has changed. I'm, ke I'm keeping this channel because I like YouTube. I like making YouTube videos. I like watching YouTube videos. And I just, I wanna keep doing it. Uh, it's not gonna be about freelancing anymore, I can tell you that. And I don't know if anyone who subscribed to this channel is actually interested in me and like other stuff that I have to say or am doing or working on, but I'm gonna keep making content. If you don't wanna follow me anymore, unsubscribe, that's totally fine. Like I'm not, I'm not offended by that. I'm not hurt by that. I will be posting on here more and I'm still kinda, I'm still figuring this out. I definitely like, I love making vlogs. So I wanna do more vlog content, but I will also definitely be posting music stuff. So I'll be posting about my music, making my music performances, you know, if I ever make a music video or something. So that's that's what's gonna be on this channel. And then probably like just these little chit chats, maybe some video essays. I don't know. I don't know. I'm open to doing different things, but I will not be talking about freelancing anymore. I will not answer any questions about freelancing. I'm sorry if I've hurt your feelings. I'm not doing this to hurt your feelings. So please understand that. I'm doing this because I have to do what's right for me. And I hope that you can respect that and that we can still be friends because you're still my buddy and I'm still your buddy. We'll just be buddies in a different way. <sighs> All right, cool. So I will link my personal socials below because I'm hopefully selling the Freelance Writer's Guide socials. Give me a follow and we'll just go from here and see what happens, okay? Okay, bye! <laughs>